Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today, we'll talk about thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, or TTP. In a previous video, in this bleeding and coagulation playlist, we have talked about HUS, hemolytic uremic syndrome. TTP is very similar. If you recall, HUS was a triad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute renal failure. However, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura is a pentad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute kidney failure, fever, and neurological abnormalities. With that said, now let's get started. Let's answer the question of the previous video. A five-year-old boy has hemolytic uremic syndrome. However, his fibrinogen level was high in the serum. How come? HUS is a problem with primary hemostasis. Fibrinogen should be normal because fibrinogen is related to secondary hemostasis, which is normal in cases of HUS. So what's the deal here? Why is fibrinogen high? Because fibrinogen is an acute phase reactant. And when you are an acute phase reactant, you will increase in the plasma if there is like an acute inflammation or if there is something acutely going on. Hemolytic uremic syndrome versus TTP. Hemolytic uremic syndrome was related to E. coli 0157H7. This is an EHEC, also known as STEC. The E. coli will lead to bloody diarrhea, and we have a triad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and renal failure. TTP is related to a defect in Adam TS13 enzyme. There is no bloody diarrhea because it's not related to the E. coli 0157H7. However, we still have microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure, plus two unique features, fever and neurological symptoms. What do you mean by neurological symptoms? I mean altered mental status. This is just a sample of my bleeding and coagulation playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Today is video number 84. Where is the problem in HUS and TTP? Temporary platelet plug, also known as primary hemostasis, and that's why platelet count will be low, but bleeding time will be high. If your problem is in primary hemostasis, and this has thrombocytopenia, platelet count will be low, but bleeding time will be high. Thank you. How about PT and PTT? They are normal because secondary hemostasis is normal. Hemolytic uremic syndrome is divided into atypical HUS and typical HUS. We have talked about typical HUS before. This is the childhood one. This is the one that has bloody diarrhea. Atypical, we'll talk about it in the next video. Thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura have inherited and acquired. Not atypical and typical, inherited and acquired. Inherited is extremely rare. It's a rare autosomal recessive genetic disease where we have genetic deficiency of the Adam TS13 gene. When you have no gene, you'll have no protein. So there is deficiency of the Adam TS13 enzyme because an enzyme is a protein. Acquired TTB, this is commoner than inherited, like way, way, way more common. There we have an inhibitor, not a deficiency, an inhibitor of Adam TS13 enzyme, which will lead to decreased activity of the Adam TS13 enzyme. And that's why one of the diagnostic tests of TTP is to measure the serum enzyme activity of Adam TS13. If it's less than 10,000, this points towards TTP. Wisdom, if you have noticed, plated problems are either decreased plated number or decreased function. TTP problem, either decrease the number or the amount of the enzyme or decrease the function of the enzyme. So the amount is fine, but it sucks because there is an inhibitor. If you look at hemophilia, you find the same concept. You either have decreased amount of factor eight or the amount is fine, but there is decreased function because there is a flipping inhibitor. Asthma, if you look at leukotrienes, how do we treat asthma? You try to decrease the number of leukotrienes or to decrease their function. How do I decrease the number? By inhibiting their secretion, by giving a 5-lipooxygenase inhibitor such as the famous xylutin. How do I decrease the function of leukotrienes even if they are secreted in normal amounts? Oh man, you need to inhibit the leukotriene receptor by giving leukotriene receptor blockers such as the Montelocast. You want something else, Jeffrey? You remember diabetes? Yeah, we had type 1 and we had type 2. What was the problem in type 1? The problem with type 1, decreased secretion of insulin. How about type 2? The secretion is fine, but insulin is inhibited, so to speak, at the receptor site. We call this insulin insensitivity. 
Medicine makes so much sense. Once you understand what the flip you're talking about, you need to convert data into information, information into knowledge and knowledge into wisdom. This is Medicosis, the Rolls Royce of medicine. What in the world is this Adam TS13 enzyme? First, to understand the disease, we need to understand the normal physiology. Normally, you have a gene, and the function of a gene is to code for a protein. Yeah. So here, the Adam TS13 gene will code for Adam TS13 protein, which is the enzyme, because all enzymes are proteins. Okay, this is normal. What's the function of Adam TS13 enzyme? Normally, to cleave the ultra-large von Willebrand factor multimers, which are big particles, they are very active, like overactive, hyperactive, and to cleave them, and to destroy them, and to break them down into von Willebrand factor monomers. These are smaller and less active, and more desirable, by the way. However, in TTP, pathology baby, we have a defect in the Adam TS13 enzyme. This defect could be a deficiency if it's an inherited disorder. It could be an inhibitor to the enzyme if it's an acquired disorder. Therefore, we have no cleaving of the ultra-large von Willebrand factor multimers, and therefore we'll have increased von Willebrand factors multimers and decrease von Willebrand factor monomers. Who is more active? The multimers. We have lots of these, and these are already hyperactive. And this will translate into platelet microthrombi everywhere. To the point that you will consume most of your platelets and you will end up with less platelets that are available in the peripheral blood, less platelets that are floating around, which will lead to decrease platelet count, aka thrombocytopenia. If you remember the von Willebrand factor, it was here. It was part of the platelet adhesion. Yeah, we need GP1B from the platelet and von Willebrand factor from the subendothelial collagen to adhere together. What if you have von Willebrand factor multimers and you have lots of them because there is no one available to degrade them because we have deficiency of the Adam TS13. This will lead to persistence of big von Willebrand factor multimers, which will lead to increase platelet microthrombi because now the platelets are adhering everywhere even without an injury. In TTP we have a defect in the Adam TS13 enzyme. There is no cleaving of the ultra-large von Willebrand factor multimers. We have lots of multimers but very few monomers. These are more desirable but now we don't have them. We have the less desirable hyperactive von Willebrand factor multimers. This will lead to increased platelet microthrombi formation. You look at these platelet microthrombi. So we have two types of TTP. The inherited, it's extremely rare, it's a genetic disease called Upshaw. Schulman syndrome, it's autosomal recessive, very rare. We have a deficiency, an actual freaking deficiency of the Adam TS13 gene. It's on chromosome 9Q34, in case you're wondering. What's 9? This is the 9th chromosome. What's Q? The long arm of the 9th chromosome, segment number 34. This will lead to a deficiency of the Adam TS13 enzyme. Acquired TTP, on the other hand, we have an inhibitor, so the secretion is fine. We have lots of Adam TS39, so it's, it's, it's there, but we have an inhibitor to it, rendering it useless. And therefore, we have decreased activity of the Adam TS13 enzyme. But wait a second, what is the nature of the actual inhibitor of the Adam TS13? It's IgG antibodies against Adam TS13. We have compared between primary and secondary hemostasis before. Since TTP is a problem with primary hemostasis, platelet count, low. Bleeding time, high. However, secondary hemostasis is normal. That's why PT and PTT are fine. Platelet anomalies, either problem in the number or problem in the function. In TTP, you have a problem in the number called thrombocytopenia, which will lead to increased bleeding time. As I've told you before, platelet count, either normal, low, or high. In TTP, it's low, thrombocytopenia. Is it pseudo or true thrombocytopenia? Of course, it's true thrombocytopenia. Is it due to underproduction, overdestruction, or splenic sequestration? It's due to overdestruction. Is it immune destruction or non-immune destruction? It's non-immune destruction. Therefore, what's going to happen to the Coombs test? It's going to be negative. Primary hemostasis disorders, all of them, by the way, have a prolonged bleeding time. We have quantitative, qualitative, and vascular disorders. Quantitative, decreased bleed number, thrombocytopenia, such as TTP. Thank you. TTP is a primary hemostasis defect. That's why we can have asymptomatic patients or we can have mucocutaneous bleeding. Many patients will be asymptomatic regarding the mucocutaneous bleeding. Some of them will have symptoms. Very, 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 very few will have severe bleeding symptoms due to the primary hemostasis defect. Platelets are not the only blood products affected in TTP. 
Red blood cells are also affected. We have hemolytic anemia. Is it microcytic, normocytic, or macrocytic? It's normocytic, therefore the MCV is normal. 80 to 100 fem2 liters. This is the normal MCV. Oh, actually, medicosis, it's 76 to 96. I don't care, nerd. Let's play this humongous game of classification. TTP, we have normocytic anemia. Is it hemolytic or non-hemolytic? Of course, it's hemolytic. Is it intravascular or extravascular? It's intravascular. Is it intrinsic, which means intracorpuscular in the red blood cells, or extrinsic outside the red blood cells? Actually, the problem here is outside the red blood cells. It's not the red blood cells' fault that the platelets, for some crazy reason, decided to form microthrombi. Cool. Is this hemolytic anemia immune or non-immune? It's non-immune destruction. Therefore, Coombs testing is negative. So how is direct Coombs test? Uh, it's negative. How about indirect Coombs test? It's also negative. It's non-immune, dude. It's non-immune. In TTP, there is intravascular hemolysis. What's the problem? Platelet microthrombi. Oh, the red blood cells will get sheared into cystocytes and destroyed. When the red blood cells destroyed, it releases hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has heme and globin. Heme has iron and protoporphyrin. Protoporphyrin will become unconjugated bilirubin. Unconjugated bilirubin will go to the liver. The liver will try to conjugate it. And that's why in hemolytic anemia, there is hyperbilirubinemia, especially increased indirect bilirubin aka indirect hyperbilirubinemia okay what else hemoglobin will end up in the kidney tubules leading to hemoglobin urea and iron will end up as hemosiderinuria ldh will be high haptoglobin will be low because it's consumed same as the platelets why do we have thrombocytopenia in ttb because all of the platelets have been consumed in the stupid platelet microthrombus and of course, when most of the platelets are busy hugging the vessel wall and you get some intravenous sample from the patient's vein, you will not find lots of platelets because all of them are hanging, hugging the wall. They will not show up in the sample. TTP, baby, defect in Adam TS13 enzyme could be a deficiency or an inhibitor, usually IgG. We cannot cleave the ultra-large von Willebrand vector multimers, therefore they will persist, leading to increase platelet microthrombi formation, which will lead to red blood cell destruction. They will get absolutely sheared into cystocytes, helmet cells, fragmented cells. And that's why we'll have thrombocytopenia, because all of the platelets have been consumed, and hemolytic anemia. And since small blood vessels are more likely to get blocked by teeny tiny plated thrombi, we call this microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Love it. TTP etiology, defect in Adam TS13 enzyme could be a deficiency if it's inherited, could be an inhibitor if it's acquired. Epidemiology, young adults in their 30s, most of the time, not all the time. Pathophysiology, there is no cleaving of the ultra-large von Willebrand factor multimers. This will lead to persistence of the ugly, nasty, large, huge von Willebrand factor multimers. This will lead to increased platelet microthrombi formation. Clinically speaking, if you have thrombocytopenia, this will lead to mucocutaneous or superficial bleeding, although this is rare, pallor and fatigue because of the anemia. It's microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Fever was part of the pentad. Remember, we have five symptoms in TTP. We have microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure, fever, and neurological abnormalities, such as altered mental status. Uremic stigmata can happen because of the acute renal failure. Bloody diarrhea is rare. Now, contrast that with hemolytic uremic syndrome. Bloody diarrhea was common. Diagnosis of TTP, platelet count low, it's called thrombocytopenia. Bleeding time is high because platelet count is low. Peripheral smear, you see schistocytes. Helmet cells, fragmented cells. PT and PTT are normal because secondary hemostasis is normal. Red blood cells is low. Hemoglobin low. Hematocrit low because it's a freaking anemia. MCV is normal because it's a normocytic anemia. Bilirubin is high, LDH is high, haptoglobin is low because it's a hemolytic normocytic anemia. Coombs is negative because it's non-immune destruction of the red blood cells. BUN and creatinine could be high if we have acute renal failure. Temperature is high, we have low-grade fever. This is one of the pentad. We can measure Adam TS13 enzyme activity. It's usually less than 10% of normal, which is absolutely pathetic. But please remember that TTP is a freaking emergency. Do not delay the treatment. Oh, I'll just wait for the Adam TS13. It's gonna take like three days to come back. The patient will be toast by then. Shut up. If you suspect it, you treat it. How do I treat it? Plasmapheresis, baby. Plasma is plasma. 
Ferris's means combination. A Ferris's means dissociation, separation, separation of the plasma. Basically, plasma exchange. You take the plasma from the patient and give the patient new plasma. Why would I give the patient new plasma? Because new plasma is normal plasma which contains the freaking atom TS13 enzyme. But I don't have the capabilities and the capacities and the resources to measure the atom TS13 in the plasma. Dude, if it's a normal plasma, it has atom TS13. What if I don't have plasma exchange in the hospital? Go with plasma infusion, but plasma exchange is better. Exchange with what? You give the patient fresh frozen plasma or cryo supernatant. Fresh frozen plasma. Imagine what Gordon Ramsay will think of this. Hey, I need to speak to the attending doctor. Hey, big boy, listen. They gave me plasma. It was frozen. The vitamins were bland, raw, and insipid. In my 30 plus years as a celebrity chef, I've never seen so much arrogance. Is this normal saline seasoned? Oh, yes, chef. It contains sodium. F me. I mean, come on. Where's the pepper? Where's the lamb sauce? Doctor, you are an embarrassment to the NHS. You need to take responsibility for your actions, essentially. And we have talked about this before. Few hours left to get 35% discount towards any product on my website. Use the promo code 35 of cancer at medicosisperfectionist.com. Purpura in HUS is non palpable. Purpura in TTP is non palpable. But purpura in HSP, Hinox Shonli in Purpura, it is palpable. Therapy is for the future, maybe. Recombinant Adam TS13. Wonderful. Since we have a defect in Adam TS13, we can give the patient Adam TS13. Okay. Caplacizumab. Mab is a monoclonal antibody. ZU is a humanized monoclonal antibody. Against von Willebrand factor multimers to break them down into beautiful monomers. ITP has no schistocytes, but TTP does have schistocytes. Adam TS13 level of more than 10% cannot and should never rule out the diagnosis of TTP. TTP is a fatal emergency. Do not delay the treatment until the lab results of Adam TS13 come back. I mean, come on. Once you have provisional diagnosis, once you have very, very good suspicion based on the microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and thrombocytopenia and maybe acute renal failure, fever, etc., start treatment with plasma exchange immediately. If you have presumptive diagnosis, this is less than provisional. This is less sure than provisional, such as like, oh, I, I, I'm not sure, like, there is just like a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, ah, not sure. Start with glucocorticoids until you are more sure. What are the diseases that have cystocytes? First, it could be an artifact. Also, we have macroangiopathic hemolytic anemia, calcific aortic stenosis, prosthetic valve, March hemoglobinuria. Whoa, this is interesting. Should be in house MD. Microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, such as DIC, TTP, HUS, help me sepsis and malignancy because they can lead to DIC. HUS was a triad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute renal failure. However, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura is a pentad five things. Microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure, fever, and neurological symptoms, usually an altered mental status. Thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, here is the trombone. There is a problem with Adam, TS13. We have microthrombi, these are microthrombones. It's a pentad, five symptoms, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, renal failure, fever, beaver, and neurological symptoms. Treatment is plasmapheresis, here is the plasmapheri, corticosteroids, here is a quarter on steroids. This was Picmonic. Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis to try them for free. They are amazing. Question of the day. Out of the five stigmata of TTP, which two will help you narrow your differential diagnosis the most towards HUS and TTP? Which two of these five? Let me know the answer in the comment section. The answers will be in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my anti-cancer pharmacology course and my antibiotics course. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.